I'm going to be retrofitting this cable for plastic plumbing pipe that has water in it. I'm going to be retrofitting it to an underground buried downspout system. The reason why I stay away from most rooftop wires is they'll melt a PVC pipe. So you don't want to use it in your underground buried downspout system. You want to protect your PVC or HDPE, pending if you're running corrugated pipe or if you got PVC pipe. You want to make sure that the manufacturer says it's safe for plastic pipes. Now again, this one is a retrofit. I'm going to retrofit it because this is a really nice cable that I'm happy with. Nice insulation, waterproof. It's got a real nice sealed end. This is a fully assembled, ready to be installed heat cable or heat tape, depending on the manufacturer, the way they brand these, sell these. It'll be referred to as heat tape or heat cable. I really like this one. It checks all the boxes for me. Now, I don't leave these plugged in because all of these with these self-regulating thermostats usually turn on once you're below 50 degrees. And when this is in an underground buried downspout, it's sealed and it's insulated. Well, this is going to get so hot it's going to burn up, and I know that. So I want to only plug this in as needed. If we're below freezing and we're not going to go above freezing, we have blue sky, the sun's going to be melting the snow on the rooftop, and I want to make sure my underground system is working, I'll plug it in. Now, if life happens and I forget to plug it in, it's not a big deal because once I have this installed, I could plug it in anytime I want. And I can 100% guarantee you that if you plug this in after you're froze up, you'll be thawed out and water will be flowing through your underground buried downspout system in 48 hours. So this is a great way to heat your underground buried downspout for $30 to $40. There is some cables that go up to $1,200 that can be used for this. But I'm going to show you how to DIY this for 30 to 40 bucks. Let's begin. All right. Super easy. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. All right, I'm going to use a fish tape. I have different size fish tapes. Here's a 25 foot. This one here is 125 foot. I'm actually going to be using this one because I know I need to go 40 feet on this downspout. I'm going to run the fish tape through the line. Once I get it through, I'll show you guys. I'm going to attach this line string to the fish tape and pull it through. Okay, I want you to see this as I see it in real time. All these parts have been made to do this. This is how we're going to get this heated line through the downspout system. We went ahead and we removed just to make this a little bit wider so we can get a cord through. We had to cut out one of the grates here at the vent. By the way, a lot of people don't understand how this works. If your line freezes and then your rooftop thaws during a thaw, this is how you vent the water so that your gutters are not full and ice up or so that your gutters are not full and the weight of the water bends the gutters and gives them this very unsightly look. That's what makes gutters, when you look at old gutters that are all wavy, that's what destroys them is when the underground system, say the grass grew over your discharge line and you couldn't get the water off the roof. The gutter troughs are overflowing. This is a vent. This also improves flow just like the air vent on a gas can, when you have a really hard rain and you're moving a lot of water, you want the air in the line to escape easily while there's water coming down the downspout. So this has all been thought out. It's a really, really well-engineered piece. But again, this center of the screen that screens out the leaves, it's removable. And the reason why it's removable is we want to be able to do camera inspections, 
We want to be able to run a heated cable through here. We want to be able to even push a garden hose through here to chase any shingle gravel to the catch basin, the inline catch basin that's set up to catch the fines. The reason why this is a very coarse screen, you see how coarse that screen is? We want it to be a coarse screen because we don't want it to plug with pollen and really small fines. That's what happens when you run a really tight screen for catching leaves. Went to the engineers and told them what we needed for this vented clean out leaf filter. We took our 35 years of experience and knowing the failure mode in all the other products, sat down with them, went through it, and not gonna lie, this took a year. Took a year, but it's well worth it. All right, so I'm gonna show you the catch basin. You guys watched us install this. I got video of us installing this. So here's the catch basin. This is a black catch basin because here in the north, when the sun is out and it could be cold, it could be zero degrees out, but there's sun, it'll heat up a black object and it'll help thaw it out. So the best way to remove this pressed fit plug, it's really nice, there's no screws holding it. Everything we built, we built with no screws because I absolutely hated these little screws that just got lost in the snow, got lost in the grass, typically. It sucks. So you just go ahead. It's a press fit. Just literally take a screwdriver. Look how easy that is. Super simple. So I pry it up here, then come up here after that. Just turn the screwdriver, just pops it. It's a press fit. Really nice fit. Now, I'm really happy with what I see here. We put this in, and man, we've had some rain. We've had some rain. Now, obviously, it's winter. It's like we have some shingle gravel. We definitely got some shingle gravel. You can see it, that dust off the roof. Starting to collect. This is a brand new system. We just put this line in. We showed you guys. All right, let me show you the proper way of hooking up this inline sediment trap. It's only five inches wide. It fits in your trench made by a shovel. Super easy install. This holds one gallon of shingle gravel. Now there's some tiny little holes that were drilled. So this is gonna serve as an excellent inspection chamber. This is as easy to pop this little grate. Even after the grass grows over the turf restrictor plate, super easy to pop this plug to do an inspection. Now I don't expect we'll have to clean this too often because it's gonna hold one gallon of shingle gravel, which is pretty cool. But for now, this is going to be great for me. I'll be able to see the fish tape, be able to pull the wire through. Then this system runs all the way down here. This was a 25 foot kit 10. If you go to our store, it's a kit 10. And then I did add more line to this because I wanted to get it further away from the house. So you're seeing this as I see it. You know, we put this in probably a few weeks ago, I would say. And we're dry. We drilled holes. A little bit of water down there. We drilled holes and put stone around here. Probably the best way to take the lid off is you just take a razor blade. Go ahead and pry this little clip. All these parts are made out of HDPE, all of them. So what does that mean to you? Well, it doesn't matter what the temperature is. It could be cold, hot. This stuff is very flexible. HDPE, we're the only ones making all of our drain products out of high density polyethylene. So now this pop-up lid comes off, see? So this is why I want to heat this line. You see how there's a little bit of water in here? It's not too bad. Actually, if that froze up, it's still not game over for me because it's just a very small amount of water. And you can actually see that the water is going down. You see the line? There's like a dirt line. You know, the water was a little higher. So, you know, we drilled holes in the pop-up and we put stone around it. And then you'd put some drainage fabric underneath the pop-up and then you take some pea stone 
you put the piece stone between the drainage fabric and the pop-up fitting. This is going to give you better leaching into the subsurface soil. After the rain, whatever is left in this line will slowly leach into the surrounding soil. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to put this little clip in my pocket. All right, so now I'm all set. I got my inline catch basin, which I'm going to use as an inspection chamber. Show you guys the whole process. I got the center. Uh, I got the center grate on the vented cleanout leaf filter removed. Oh, by the way, when you go to put this back in, really good to note. You see the lugs? There's three lugs. Like my thumb is pointing out a lug. See how that lug is smaller on the bottom? This is a bigger lug here. This is a bigger lug. And the one down here is smaller. That's by design. The small lug goes down. So when you go to put it back in, you get the lugs right. We did this so that when you turn it, the screen is correct. Okay, this is good to note. All right. Really good to note so that you guys know what to expect. So when you're using a fish tape, if you've never used a fish tape before and you bought a 50 foot fish tape for a job like this, because you really don't want any more fish tape than you really need. This one's 125 feet and it's kind of a pain when it comes time to rolling it up because there's just so much cable in it. So when you're putting a fish tape in, you're gonna be right here. You're gonna grab it like this and, and you're just gonna push. And you're just gonna push it and it goes in pretty darn easy but you need to do that to guide it down it works really well so i suddenly just stopped i just want to show you guys this so you know what to expect so it's no big deal we're in the catch basin now you can see the cable you can see the fish fish tape my camera wants to focus on the uh, turf restrictor plate there we go. So you can see the cable inside. Well, I just hit the wall on the catch basin. I ain't going nowhere. So now what I'll do is I'll reach down in and I'll grab that. Super easy. And then I'll put the fish tape in the corrugated pipe. Now this is another reason why you don't want any internal connections with your corrugated pipe. So now you can see it's lined up with the pipe. That's why it's higher. And it goes really nice and easy. Obviously I'm in a situation where I could use another hand, but I'm trying to hold the camera and show you guys this. So you just take some cable out and then you take the cable and you just guide it. So, all right, I'm going to finish pushing this all the way to the pop-up emitter. All right, guys, my fish tape acted just like it did when I hit the wall in the inline sediment trap. So, I feel pretty confident that I'm all the way to the other end and I'm hitting the pop-up. Sure enough, there it is. There's my cable to my fish tape. Now I'm gonna tie a string to the end of that cable. You can see that it's built for that. See how it's like a hook? Well, I'm just gonna take some line string. I'm gonna tie it to that cable and then I'm gonna pull this string all the way through the underground buried downspout system. I wanted to show you guys what to expect with a fish tape if you're using one for the first time. So this black handle, it slides. This is going to be hard to do, hold the camera and do this at the same time. So basically you push this black handle and you keep pushing it and it takes the cable and coils it up super nice for you. So. Really important because a lot of people, they'll just try to pull this and, and, and it'll just get all wadded up inside and it won't work very good. But you want to actually rotate it. You want to actually rotate this orange part, let the black part 
just go around and this will just automatically coil nice and tight for you. So we have the string all the way through. See what we have here. So now it's time to put in the heat cable. So this end, you just put right through here. So you can see just how easy this is. Now this is better if you have a second person. What you want to do is you want to tie this end to the string. So that's what we're going to do. You tie this end to the string. You want to guide this in. The person, the person that's feeding the cable through is doing most of the work. This is a pretty stiff cable. You want to you want to push. You want to make sure you always have slack because the person that's going to be on the string they're guiding it. That's all you want that little string to do. You don't want to try to pull this cable through with this little string. If that's your intention, then use then put a rope through here is what I'm trying to say. Instead of um, a small string, use a rope if you're all by yourself and you're just going to be yanking this thing through. Because that little string will break on you, and then you'll get to this point, and you'll be pretty frustrated. And yes, if I sound like I'm speaking from experience, yeah, that happened. Okay, with this brand, the thermostat is a size where I did have to cut out another one of the louvers. No big deal. That's it. So I have this fished all the way to the pop-up. I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to pull this through a little bit. I got some slack in the line. Um, I'll show you what this looks like when I have it finished here. You can see right there. This is going to keep this from freezing up. It's going to, it's going to make sure that there's an opening through this line when everything's froze solid to where... When we do have a thaw and we're taking water off the roof, like right now the snow's melting, it's 34 degrees. You know, we have a steady flow of water. Now, as long as this is not froze solid, we'll be able to remove the water through our underground buried downspout system. Now, the cable that you use for gutters, that's a whole different world than what we're using. We're using plastic, plastic plumbing heat tape. It's 8 watts. It's inexpensive. It's like about a dollar a foot. Completely different world. Now, if you're looking to keep your gutters from freezing up, you're going to have to buy heat cable. You're going to have to be really careful. When you come down with the heat cable and you come down to here, stop right before you get to the vented clean out leaf filter and do like a little horseshoe with your heat cable. That's how you want to do that. So you got your heat cable down to the end of your downspout, and then we have plastic heat cable, plastic pipe wrap that prevents freeze up. And in the north, these are the things you do. So northern US or Canada, no big deal, man. It's well worth it. If you have a problematic downspout that's causing ice up, it's causing all kinds of problems for you, this is a super easy fix. So I'm going to get this in here, show you what I do with that. Get that clean. I used the 40 foot because I had a kit 10 at 25 feet and I added onto it. And I always use an external coupler, never an internal coupler for this very reason. Look, we're fishing through a pipe and we can't be clunking an internal connection you want an external on the outside of the pipe when you do couplers all right so you want to take this heat tape and you want to unbox it lay it on the ground plug it in make sure it works a lot of these cheap heat tapes do not work believe it or not brand new in a box they don't work so you don't want to go through all this work of install and another thing i want to show you right here you want something that's watertight connection for your extension cord to this. This basically goes over the end of the connection point of the extension cord and the electric plug for this heat tape. All right, so let's take a look at what we did. All right, so I have the whole thing installed. I just wanted to show you at this point what this looks like. That's the thermostat. That's going to control when this, you know, 
basically gets turned on. I believe it literally turns on when it's below 50 degrees. I'm pretty sure that's what the directions said. You have to unplug this to prevent it from running if you don't want this thing running when it's 40 degrees out. What I do is I just take this and I just do that, guys. I don't want to lose it. I don't care where I put that. I'm going to forget where I put it come spring. No big deal. Doesn't hurt anything. Door goes on. We're all set. Now, I will put a piece of our super sticky, super stretchy plumbing tape. It's a great tape. The reason why I want to put the tape over this, it's going to lock in the heat. It's not going to let out all the heat. And that's really important. I want the heat to rise and kind of help. If we create any, any heat, I want it to actually start to come up into the metal downspout to help prevent that from freezing up at the end. Because I don't have heat cable ran through this. I don't have that many problems on this house. Not worried about it. But if this was an issue, I would run heat cable through there. Follow the directions when you're using heat cable. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. So I take all the extra cable and I just put it in the catch basin. Now remember, this is for plastic pipe. It doesn't melt plastic. And it also will not melt the insulation of this heat tape. It won't. Super simple. Whatever you have for excess, because you can't cut it. There's no cutting this, there's no trimming this. The cable is the length of the cable. So whatever you have for extra, just coil it up and stuff it in the catch basin. Now this is what I do down at the pop-up. What's nice is when this comes, you know, in a box, it's all coiled. So it somewhat has a memory, super easy to spin it like this in the pop-up. You can see what I did. Now I just take the lid, put the lid back on. I go ahead, take the clip, snap the clip on. That's it. This is going to hold all the heat in. Another reason to have a pop-up at the end of your line. How else are you going to hold the heat in on your underground buried downspout system? Black, the color black, will gather all the sun's radiant energy. So here in the north, we could have, say, a 15-degree day, but blue sky and sunny, and that pop-up will thaw out for us. We're going to do the same thing to the inline sediment trap. Instead of using a green cover, we're going to use a nice dark black, really rich in color top. And it's going to be solid. It's not going to be vented because we're vented at the leaf filter. Beautiful. Beautiful. It looks good. This is not a bad DIY project. Get you outside on a nice day. Super easy, no big deal. If you don't want to do it when it's cold, it's not that cold. If you live in the north, like a day like today, there's nothing. Now this is a pressed fit. We want to trap the heat in once again. I'm just going to step on it to push it in because it's a, it's a pressed fit. You can just hear how it snapped on, pretty cool. We're all set, we're all set. All I have to do now, put a piece of tape over here to trap the heat in. Pretty easy, pretty simple DIY. And again, I've used a half dozen different brands. This is just what Amazon's peddling right now. It's what comes up suggested. And it's a pretty fair price in my opinion. On average, it's about a dollar a foot. It's actually even priced a little better than that on some of these different lengths. Always order a little longer than what you need. All right, everybody. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. And if there's any questions you have about running this 
plastic pipe wrap through an underground buried downspout system? Leave them in the comments section because I try to answer all the questions. All these parts, when we designed them, we made them with this type of thing in mind. That's why the system was already set up to run heat tape through it. It's already set up to run a camera through it for an inspection. It's already set up to have a garden hose go down through the center portion and just flush any shingle gravel that gets stuck here in the elbow out to the inline sediment trap, the inline catch basin. All right, this is definitely an easy DIY. It's a fun little DIY project, super clean, super easy. If you have any questions or if there's a video you want me to make, leave it in the comments section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.